All right, how's everybody doing? This is the Comic Samurai. I want to welcome you to my next video, and tonight we're going to be doing another Friday Comic Challenge. These are put out by Comic Collector Geek, and every Friday he chooses a theme and encourages collectors to go through their long boxes and find comics with covers that share a common theme. And tonight's theme is werewolves. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First up, we got this Spider-Man number 32, and this has got an amazing cover done by Frank Miller. And I always like pho photograph covers where they incorporate some kind of image in the background. And this one has got Boris Karloff's Frankenstein, Lon Chaney Jr.'s The Wolfman. We got Bela Lugosi's Dracula, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and Werewolf by Night makes an appearance jumping at Spider-Woman. And what a way to start it off. Let's go ahead and move it on. Next up, we got Ghost Rider number 55. And I believe that this is the first time that the Ghost Rider ever met Werewolf by Night. And what a great clash. Those two mystical uh, heroes meeting each other. And do they have a misunderstanding? Do they fight? What's the story? I don't know, but it's a great cover. And I can't wait to read this one again. Next up, we got Giant Sized Creatures featuring Werewolf by Night and Tigra the Werewoman, they call her. And uh, this is a real early appearance by Tigra, if not her first appearance. But it happens to be teamed with Werewolf by Night. And I'm moving on from his. I don't want anybody to get bored saying, oh, we're seeing the same werewolf over and over again. But this was a great team up of those two lycanthropic heroes teamed up for the first time. What a great intro for Tigra. Next up, we got Negative Burn number 16 put out by Caliber Press. And this is the company that did the first three issues, four issues, of the crow and J.O. Barr didn't do this cover but it features a great werewolf and when it's done in that horror vein of the 80s oh it just tickles something in me that oh, I really do like that uh, old mystical werewolf that they used to do in the 80s kind of horrific like the howling remember that movie oh that was a creepy one next up we got splatter uh, I don't see a number on it, just May of 1991, but Tim Vigil does this cover, and it features a great moon and a werewolf in the background there. Oh, I really do like that, Tim Vigil. He does some of the best art, and he, it's always kind of small press stuff. The only thing that I know of is like a Tales of Green Lantern core or something that he did mainstream, but whenever I can find any art done by Tim Vigil, I like to pick it up. He did the Faust series, but this is a werewolf on the cover of Splatter, done by Caliber. Moving on, now I'm going to get a little more mainstream. This is New Mutants number 90, and it features that feral character, or Rain. I always thought it was Ron, the, the little she-werewolf. Oh, she's such a great character, but I just found out that it's pronounced rain, so I had to have a paradigm shift. It was like a wake-up call. I, I didn't know that's how it was pronounced, but Liefeld just nails this cover. I think that this is the best cover of her in her werewolf form. I do like that one where Warlock dies, and she's holding him, but she's not in her werewolf form there. But that character is just so tragic and so compelling that I, I really like that version of a she-werewolf. And she makes another appearance in this X-Factor number three. And this, is, this was such an entertaining series. I, I really do recommend the first 15 issues or so. But that's her up top. And what a dynamic pose. And I can't believe she's not more of a prolific character in the Marvel Universe. She's the only werewolf that I know of she werewolf that makes an appearance and their powers haven't been explored to the fullest extent like are silver bullets bullets the only thing that can kill her and what if she uh, had a magnetic field so silver bullets couldn't come close to her then she'd be invincible anyway i really do like that character and the last one that i'll show with her is this x-force number three and this is a variant edition cover and this was a kind of a series that uh it 
answered the question of what do the X-Men do when they have to go on more of a black ops mission, more of a darker mission where they know they're going to have to do some killing. And this answers that question. Wolverine leads the team and Rain is such an integral part of that team. She does get captured and they have to rescue her and kind of becomes a damsel in distress. But until then, she is a force to be reckoned with. Oh, her werewolf form is truly an untapped source of potential interest in the Marvel Universe. Next up, we got House of Mystery, number 287. And this one features a beautiful cover done by Mike Kaluta, who is one of my favorite artists. That Kaluta did all of the Shadow series put out by DC, but he did a werewolf cover in this one. And I always like them in different settings. Usually it's Halloween and creepy and fall, but this one is a winter setting and you really get to see them offset by that white background. I dig that cover. Next up we got Weird Mystery Tales number 21 and this is a Bernie Wrightson cover and it features three werewolves on the cover and nobody can draw gothic horrific characters like Bernie Wrightson and he nailed it on this one. The lighting, those three figures and that one lone huntsman alone with only a manual weapon to defend himself. Oh, you just have to open this comic book and see what happens. Next up, we got Fables number uh, 29 and it's the first one I'm going to show that features a fight between the wolfman or a werewolf and the Frankenstein monster and I'm careful not to say Frankenstein because that was the name of the doctor but everybody else calls the monster Frankenstein so if I slip up you'll have to forgive me but I think this is a beautiful image of those two battling that big B wolf or the big bad wolf, he's kind of a werewolf in this Fables series. And if you haven't read those Fables, oh, they are so entertaining. But he does fight the Frankenstein monster here, and the monster is kind of put up to be a tragic figure, but it is so entertaining. And this image of those two classic monsters butting heads, it can only be topped by this Doc Frankenstein, number four, put out by the Wachowski brothers, and art by uh, Scrochi or Scrosi, I'm not sure how you say it, but I always thought it was Scrochi. But this one, ah, oh, this whole series is underrated. They did a couple issues and then it quit and then they wrapped it up in a hardcover. So the only way you know how the story ends is if you buy the hardcover. It's on my want list, but leading up to where the single issues uh, ended. I enjoyed this story so much. And Doc Frankenstein, what a compelling hero he is. And he fights these werewolves on the cover here with that huge moon in the background. And oh, what a great image that is. All right. Well, I always save the best for last. And this is Giant Size Superheroes featuring Spider-Man number one. And it's got the man wolf and Morbius, the living vampire and Spider-Man, all three of those ish, uh, heroes going at it here. And when Spider-Man faces those two gothic villains, well, they're not exactly villains, but characters. Oh, you got to open it up and say, is it a misunderstanding? Do any of them uh, get defeated in this issue? What happens? But that Gil Kane cover, it just is amazing with those bright, bold covers. This is how a werewolf, vampire, superhero cover should be drawn. And it's my number one choice for this week's Friday comic challenge of werewolf. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what your best werewolf covers are. Thanks again and have a good night.